Hello, I am Michael Gaucher, and I am building a RSS reader program in Microsoft.NET, WPF framework, and C Sharp connected to Microsoft SQL Server in Windows 11 using a low-end computer, or what people would call a low-end computer, an 11-inch, 2-in-1 HP computer with an Intel quad-core Pentium processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM. And what's interesting is that we are making progress in our endeavor to build this program. And as from a performance standpoint, there's no major roadblocks. I do think things are slower than they would be if we were on a higher end computer. But from the progress that I'm making, the, the progress isn't uh, too bad. I'm, I'm not stymied. Uh, in, in too significant of a, of a way by using a computer like this. So an RSS feed represents a website and that website's stream of RSS information that it's published in the RSS format. And I'm using event handlers to connect different user interface elements together. So when you click on a tab, the tab is then going to trigger an event where if I am tapped into that event, I can use that opportunity to then uh, inquire as to which feed the tab I'm on represents, use that to index the information uh, that I have stored in memory regarding the uh, feed information so that I can load the relevant headlines into a list box. And then um, that information is going to be cached in the list box object in this particular implementation. And then once a headline in the list box is clicked, there's an event that's going to uh, trigger from that. And if I'm tapped into that event, I can use that opportunity to acquire as to which feed I'm in, which headline I'm in, to acquire the correct article content from the cache of headline and article information that I have um, cached in memory. And then I can use the article content to um, show the article content and details on the screen. And that's the goal. And wh where we are in this process is um, implementing the listing of headlines and looking at the, um, the, the different qualities of, of that process. Um, just as a heads up, what I want is not only the ability to uh, show headlines in a list box, but when I click on a headline and then I click to another feed and I click on a headline there, and then I click back to the feed I just clicked on, that what I clicked on is or is still there, right? That's what I would like. And of course, in this process, there's, there's going to be refinements, but I think we're making such great progress that, um, you know, by the end, we're gonna have a, a nice, um, capable program that can be advanced further to um, work productively in a Microsoft Windows environment. The data definitions that um, I put in place, they will be tweaked a little bit for convenience, to improve the way the person writing the program can access the data, right? And to relate the code more easily between the different parts. The relationship between a tab, headline, and article content is primarily coordinated through the reader tabs selection change event handler on lines 80 through 104. This event handler will provide our tab functionality. When we click on a tab, we see the list of headlines associated with that tab. Remember, a tab in this case refers to an RSS feed. An RSS feed is roughly analogous to a website that publishes its content in RSS format. Let's run the program and see if we have the list of tabs at the top left and the headlines streaming down from top to bottom. Good progress so far. We have exactly what we need as a starting point, but we need to expand that. So the way to do that is to go back to the headline selection changed event handler 
on line 108 and let's put in a little change here where we'll access a copy of the selected headline. When we access the selected headline, and this is the headline that's that's been clicked in the list box, we can then use the headline to update the part of the screen where we would like to see the headline and article content together. After our modifications, we'll run the program to see the impact of those changes. We are now iterating through the changes through a code and debug cycle. And when we set up the variable, we want to cast it to a type feed article because selected item is a generic object. And so by casting it to a feed article, we can be sure to access its properties and methods, access the interface for feed article in a way that is more useful to our program. And so we have a few pieces of information together, the headline text and the article content. And we do that on lines 111 and 112. So let's run the program again and see the impact of those changes. So as I click through the different tabs and click on the headlines, you see changes on the right hand of the screen. The program itself is stable, which is good. The output on the screen, on the right, high, right side of the screen, needs work. The display of the headline is good, but we can improve this by having the article content show on the right side of the screen just under the headline. And so, yes, we are showing something from the article but it's not the content that we expect. The first step I'll take is refactor the code in the headline selection changed event handler into another function. I am planning ahead where I know I will need that functionality from multiple functions. So I choose the name apply article, apply underscore article. Any changes I make in this function will work across event handlers that reference that function. In other words, I'm going to make the functionality for updating the headline and the article content as a reusable function. And the apply underscore article function has that functionality. It also allows me to simplify the code in the headline selection changed event handler and the reader tabs selection changed event handlers respectively. And at this stage, I'm quite pleased with the modifications that have been made. Let's run the program and see what that looks like. So as we click on the headlines, we now see more content on the right side. We're showing the article content, but it is in HTML format. I already know we will need to translate from HTML to a normal view. In the meantime, let's take our progress and commit the latest state of the code to the local Git repository and route that to GitHub, push that to GitHub, afterwards. In the next video, we're going to refine this and achieve our objective, which is to have what we have established so far, where you can click the tabs and click the headlines. But when we click on the headline, we're going to see the article content in its full glory. I will need to use the Microsoft Help Viewer to find the appropriate API function, appropriate API objects, classes, to accomplish this. And 
that should be a pretty straightforward process. And now that we have this milestone in Git, we can move on to the next stage. Stay tuned for the next video, video number 14, and then video 15 will give an overall conclusion to this process.